so um, um, so and we we briefly go over the first um, algorithm named insertion sort. So we said that uh, people design those computer scientists. They design insertion sort based on the intuition uh, where we play our uh, poker cards. So it's like say for example, if we have our if we already have four cards at hand that are are already sorted, which are two. Uh, four, five, and ten. So if we got a new card from or a new number from the table, so we want to insert the new card into the correct place so that after the insertion, we, we got five cards that are sorted. So the way we we find the correct place to insert the new card seven is that so we comp first we compare seven with the last card at, at hand, which is ten. So we find that seven is less than ten, right? So, which means that in the sort, if, uh, uh, in the in the sorted array, seven should go before ten, and then we compare seven with the second last number at hand, which is five, and we find that seven is larger than five. So we know that okay, seven should go in between five and ten, correct? So we so we should in definitely insert seven between five and ten, and so for us to insert seven, what we do is that first we are going to move. 10 a little bit to the right to, to allocate space for the new card seven. And then we will insert seven into the place that originally taken by 10. So then we got five, ten, seven, 10. Does it make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is the, 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 uh, the procedure that we talked about when we are uh, uh, sorting uh, poker cards. And uh, we also briefly go over this one, uh, the, the short code over here. So we said, okay, this, this piece of code is written in the language of short code. It's like it's something like in between human language and computational language. So, or programming language. So uh, it, it, is, it is more, it is shorter than, uh, than uh, like Java or, or C++ code, but it is easier. At the same time, it is easier for us to understand. So uh, in our in, in my lecture in the lectures, my task is to explain this uh, short code for you. And uh, uh, so so after you, so so here in my lecture, my lecture is going to purely focus on the short code. And then when you go to your after the class, so in your homework, what you should do is this. Okay, you should translate this short code to Java. Okay, so that is going to be your homework, and that is the this is the time when you practice your program in Java. So uh, I'm sure that you have a lot of difficulties, especially in the first couple of weeks. So uh, uh, let's go. Let's. So now uh, the the focus of this lecture is to explain the details of the pseudocode. Of, uh, the details of the pseudocode. So uh, okay, let's look at what we have in the pseudocode. So. So what is the first line over here? What is the, the, the first line over here? What is the purpose of this line? Yes. That'd be the function? Yes, it's like declaration of the function. And we say that the function name is called insertion sword and it, ta it takes one input parameter, which is an integer array and the, the variable name is capital A, right? And then, uh, so below that is the, um, is they the, uh, say, 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 uh, de definition of the function. So uh, first we have for j equal to until uh, to a dot length. So what is this? What is this line? So that's a for loop? Yes, that's a for, cool. So then everything below it is just uh, the, uh, the statements inside the for loop. So in each iteration, what we do is that we got key equal to a j, okay, key equal to a j. So, so, um, so tell me, if you are going to translate this line to Java, what are you going to do? What, what kind of statement? Variable. So it's going to be the in, inter, wait, integer or key? Yes, integer key hmm. equal to a j, right? Yeah. Yes, this is the, the translation of this line to Java. So basically we are going to create a new variable whose name is key and assign use the, the, the value at aj to assign to, to, to the key. And then, so what is this line? Uh, what is this line? 
over here. Is a comment? Yes, this is a line of comment. So because it starts with uh, so double uh, backslash, it means that this this line is like a is is a comment. It's like the note that the programmers leave for himself or herself or the other people, and it's not going to be executed by our Java compiler or the uh, Java uh, virtual environment at all. And then we have i equal to j minus one, and then we have while i is larger than zero and a i is larger than key. What is this part? What are the, the lines starting from five to seven? Um, this is a while loop. Yes, it's a while loop, great. So if, so, so if you if you do not realize that this is a for loop and this is a while loop, then you should definitely work on your Java, okay? So, uh, so, so brush up your Java, uh, okay? And then, um, so the last line is we have is that uh, AI plus one equal to key. So this is uh, the, the third code. And, uh, but before I jump into the details of the third code, I want to briefly discuss array because in the first couple of weeks, we are only we are mainly playing with arrays. So let's say I'm going to create a node over here. So suppose here we have a a uh, an array capital A, and we have a couple of numbers in it. Let's say we have four, two, five, one, and six and three. Just for example, okay. And so in Java, what are the index of these elements in the array? Five. What is the index of these numbers? Is it five? Zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah, five. yeah, it starts from zero, yes. So here we got zero, one, two, three, four, five. So uh, so that, okay, uh, so this is in Java. And then, um, so we, we basically, so in Java, basically the, the index of the array starts from zero. And if we, if in Java, if we say A1, if we, if we, we, if we have a line saying that, okay, we're going to system dot out dot print line a one. What kind of output are we going to see from the controller? A two. Yes. So a one basically. Uh, sorry, is there a question? I think somebody's unmuted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you need to talk, sorry. If you need to talk, if you need to talk uh, with your family or someone else, please mute mute it. Okay. So, uh, so here we got a uh, system dot out dot print line a one, and for a one we're going going to use one. We're going to go to the index one and find the crisp the corresponding value in in a uh, in the in the uh, for the index one and retrieve the value, which is two. So we are going to see the output of two, correct? Yeah. Yes, this yeah, is correct. actually, there are a lot of languages which follow the same convention we, um, uh, where the, uh, uh, the array index starts from zero, uh, the array index starts from zero and some language includes C or C++, Java and Python. So, but there are some other languages which, which use the a different convention, convention where the array index starts from one. So for example, uh, I'm going to use a different color. Uh, so for example, Scala, and or if you know a more, uh, say, uh, rigid language, uh, rigid uh, program language named Peak. So uh, they, they, they use the convention where the array index starts, uh, the array index starts from one. So here, if we, if we have, if we are, for these languages, if we say A1, what we really are going to get is the value four, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, yeah. okay, so basically there are two different types of conventions. The first tab is what uh, is, is the, uh, uh, the, where the array index starts from zero and and we are more familiar with it because uh, when, when you are doing your Java 1, Java 2, you use this one. But there are some other languages which follow different convention where the array index starts from one. So uh, in our textbook, because this textbook was written basically even more actually, so uh, the, develop, the development of pro programming languages that people first design some very rigid programming languages like PIG. 
Well, so, um, so, uh, uh, so, so in the in the in the old days, like most uh, program languages, use the this convention where the array index starts from one. So, to, uh, to be general or to be consistent with the history of computer science, our textbook also follow the same convention. So it assumes that the array index starts from from one, and also similarly the pseudocode will have the same convention okay so and uh so so keep that in mind because with this difference in the array index with with the array index when we when you are doing your homework by translating this pseudocode to java you are going you cannot do do the translation just like word by word translation no you need to modify something especially the array index the the beginning value and, and the ending value of the array index otherwise you will be your code will either have runtime errors or it will, even though it, it runs successfully, it will give you a, 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 an incorrect output. So, so pay, pay attention to that. It will give you a lot of trouble. And uh, so, so uh, but this is a good opportunity for you because if, if our textbook follow the same convention as Java, you just need to basically, you just need to word to word translation without paying your attention understanding what why does the, the circle do that and what does each variable stand for so with this difference with this difference you will have to know okay what does this variable stand for so that you know what what is the value or what is the starting and ending value uh, for this value to be uh, when you are do, uh, when you are doing your homework okay so um, so uh, next, I'm going to to uh, to explain the source code for you, and uh, so uh, with an example. So let me say I'm going to create. Uh, I'm going to just write down the source code on the left. So here we got uh, insertion sort. Okay, so this is the pseudocode, and here we're going to use an example. So two, uh, five, two, four, six, one, three. So we are going to form execute over a p an input array, so which is five, two, four, six, one, three. Okay, so here because. So here we, we, we are giving an input array A, and so which stores the value five, two, four, six, one, three. And so so the index of the array, it starts from one. Uh, so I'm just writing down the index of each element on top of it. So our task is, so so uh, starting from now, our task is to exit, so it's like we're going to pass this array to the insertion sort algorithm over here and we're going to execute it line by line to say what kind of observations are we, uh, are we going to see okay so first let's say we we have four j's starting from uh, uh for j start from two to or a dot length okay so to a dot length uh here um so if i ask you to translate this line the the the, the four the four the, uh, the, the for into uh, Java, what what kind of statement are you going to use? How how are you going to translate this line into Java? For j uh, for j in uh, a dot no range dot range with the the parentheses len a. Mm -hmm. Would that be 
mm-hmm. not exactly because if you remember uh, in the forum in a, in a, in a declaration declaration of the forum we have three parts to to we need to oh. write down three parts the first part is the initialization okay what is the initial value uh, in the beginning of the for loop and so so the sec the second one is the terminate condition and the last one is like what kind of changes are we going to make at each iteration right so to translate the uh, the the the, uh, the first line of the pseudo code into java it will be this for integer j starting from 2 and J is less than or equal to a dot length and J plus plus. Okay, so so here the initial condition is that uh, when when the when the for, when the for loop starts, we're going to create a new integer named J and its initial value is two. And so we are going to run the for loop as long as J is less than or equal to the length of the array. And then in each iteration of the for loop, at the at at the end of each, each uh, of each iteration, each iteration of the for loop, we are going to increase the value of j by one. Is that correct? So, like even like a uh, Java code, we still start at j equals two instead of no. Of, um, in j in Java one. code, you will have to modify it. Okay. Right? Because because. So, uh, because of the difference in the index, I'm not going to tell you how to modify it because I, uh, so I will leave it f- f- uh, to you. It's not that difficult if you understand what does J mean. Okay. Sure. So let me say I yeah I was thinking Python for for some reason. Okay. So uh, in terms of array, Python and uh, Java are basically the same. So. Uh, uh, unless you are talking about the uh, so so unless you are you are talking about some some more functions like NumPy uh, in Python, okay? So uh, this is the first. <clears throat> this is how we are going to translate the first line from uh, uh, from uh, pseudocode to 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 Java program. But uh, what I want to say is that so by default, at each at the end of each uh, four. Uh, at each uh, iteration of the for loop, we are going to increase this value by one, increase j by one. Okay, so here, let's say for j starting from two to a dot length. What is a dot length? What is the length of the array? In this case, five. Six. Five. five or six? It's six. It's six. Yes, it's six. six. The, the length of the array is like how many elements are, are there. So in total, we got five, sorry, we got six numbers. And so, so the highest value that J can reach is six. And so then let's say here, initially we're going to create a new value named J, a new variable named J and whose initial value is two, correct? Yes. Okay. Correct. And then we're going to this line so in which we're going to create a new variable named the key and use aj to assign to it. So here, uh, because, because here we're going to use j as the index of the, of the array. So, so to make it clear, I'm always going to mark the, the place of the index on top of the array. So because j, the value of j is two, so I'm going to write j over here. So we can, if you learn something like C or C++ before, Basically, you can view J as an iterator or as a, a pointer to, to a corresponding place of the array. So he, because J is two, so basically we are going to use to, to, to mark J pointed to the second place of the array. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So next, we are going to have key equal to a J. So we're, we are going to create a new variable named the key. And what is the value of key? What kind of value that key is going to have? Is is key going to have? Going to be an integer. Yes, key is going to be an integer. And what what is the value? Would it be four because you have it at two? So you skip zero. Mm, one, no. Two. No. Two. Not four. I say. With this statement, we're basically going to get the value of a j and assign it to key, right? Am I right? 
So what is yes. AJ? So let's let's be slow. AJ, we need to find the value of AJ since J is two. So we can write it as A2, correct? Is it two? Yeah. And then what is A2? Just two. Ooh. Yes, it is two. So because J is here, so we're going to go to A2, which is over here, to find the value of AJ, and it is two. The reason why I mark J at this place is that if we want, if you want to the, retrieve the value, sorry, if you want to retrieve the value AJ, we just need to look down at what kind of value does J point to, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. So, so here we have. So basically, the the value of key is going to be. It's going to be what? Two. Yes, two. Because AJ is two. So we're going to use two to assign the two key. Okay. So here we got key equal to two. And uh, and next, so we have this. Okay. We have uh, integer i, uh, integer. So so we we're going to create a, a new variable named i, and its value is its value is going to be j minus one. So what kind of value does does i have? It's one. Yes, it's, it is one because j is two. So two minus one is one. So that's why we got uh, i as one. Am I too fast? No, that's good. Oh, no, no. you're fine. Okay, okay, great. So. Uh, so that's why we have uh, i equal to one. So here, what what we so as of now we uh, so because if you look look down on the code, you will find that we use it, we basically we are going to use i as the index to retrieve value from the array, right? So so for um, we're always going to to use to mark the index at the appropriate appro pro, appropriate place of the array. So because i is one, so we are going to write i. We are going to write write i over here and have a uh, let it have a pointer to the first place of the array. So then next time if we want to retrieve a i, we just need to look at check the value inside the place. Okay, so uh, this will make our uh, this will make our life easier. <clears throat> okay, so um, next uh, let me remove this. Okay. And uh, um, so, so uh, here at this iteration. So until now, you can view it in this way. So, so it's it's the same. It is it is something like like this. Okay, we only have one card at hand. That is five. In our uh, in our hand now, we only hold one card, which is five. So are all the cards in our hand sorted now? No. So let me say you can view it in, it in this way. So for this one, you can take it in this way. Our can, our hand only has one card that is five. So let me say, let me ask you one question: Are all the cards at our hand sorted? Yes. No. Yes, because so we only have oh. one card, so there is no comparison, and so so it is sorted. Uh, and then we get a new card. We got a new card, which is two. So it's like we got five at our hand, and then we got a new card two from the table. From the table. So where are we going to insert two into our hand? Before. In front of five. Yeah. Yes, before five. In front of five, right? So to make space for two, what we are going to do is that. So first, we are going to move five to the second place. We are going to move five a little bit to the right. So that we can have some space for two. So this space is is free now, and then we can we can uh, move insert two the new card in front of five, right? Yes. Okay. So here uh, I got one question. Yes. Where did you get? Where did you get those chat numbers from? Two, uh, sorry, five, two, four. So this is just one example. It's like we we got we got an input array instance and passed it to the function. And actually, this this array over here, you can you can write you can prepare any array for it. 
So um, I use this example because in the textbook, it also follows this example. Okay, so uh, so next, let's say uh, this is this is the so here we just talk about the logic. Uh, so so how are we going to insert the new card to to our hand and make the, those two cards sorted? Okay, and then uh, let's look at the the following pr procedure. So 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 next we're going to the uh, while loop. We have while i is larger than than zero. Is i larger than zero or not? Right now it is, yes. Yes, so because we have i as, here we have i as one, right? So one, we compare one with a zero and yes, it's true. And ai is larger than key. What is, so So what is ai? What five. is ai? Yes, five, because, because i is here. So ai is basically five. So we have ai as five. And what is key? Two. Two. Two, yes, you can easily find the value of key over the uh, variable value table, like here. Uh, so it's right over here. So let's say is five larger than two? Yep. Yes. yes, so this is also true, right? So we have true and true, it is, true and true is? True. True, yes, true. so which means that the condition of the while loop is satisfied so that we can execute the statements in the while loop. And so we, are, so we can go to the next line with AI plus one equal to AI. Okay, so be, uh, before I explain the code over here, let me say here, if we have two values in Java, integer A and B, and we have A as uh, say five and B as two, Okay, he has two. And we have A, we, we have, after we, we execute this statement, after we execute this, this statement, A equal to B, and what is going to be the value of A and B respectively? Two. So what, what is going to be two? Uh, A and B. Yes, correct. So after after we execute it, we have both A equal to two and B equal to two, to two, right? With this statement, what we do is that we got the value, we, we basically got the value of B and assigned to, to A because the value of B is two. So it's like we assign A a new value to. Make sense? Yep. Yes. Okay? Yes. Okay, so so I hope that you uh, hear when A equal to B, you don't, you don't tell me that false <laughs> so if we want to compare if two values are the same are the same or not we should use this a equal equal b right double equal means the comparison e equality check right yeah mm -hmm. yep okay so uh just a little bit java and then let's come back to the uh to the example uh over here so next we we are going to execute the line AI plus one equal to AI. So with this line, we, we, what we basically are going to do is that we retrieve the value of AI and assign it to AI plus one, correct? It's like a sign, we got the value of AI and assigned to AI plus one. Yeah. So let's write it, let's write it down, uh, uh, write the details down, okay? So what is I? What is the one. value of i? One. Yes, one. i is one. So it will be a one. And this side will be one plus one, which is a two, right? So if we translate this line in a more uh, clear way, it will be like a two equal to a one, right? Over here. Yeah. Yes. So we are going to retrieve the value from A1 and assign it to A2, okay? Assign to A2, what is the value of A1? Five. 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 So this value is five. So basically we are going to use five, or, sorry, we are going to assign five to A1. No, sorry, assign five to A2. So here what we do is this. Uh, we are going to give A2 a new value. So its original value is, is 
uh, is say uh, two, and now it has a new value of five, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. And the next, we're going to have i minus minus. What do we do with i minus minus? We just move it down to like the low. Yes, left, we just the left decrease side. the value of i, right? Mm -hmm. So here, uh, originally i is one. So we decrease it by one. So what is the new value of i? Zero. Yes, i, I reach zero. So then, since i reaches to zero, we are going to move i to here. It does not point to any element at all. So it's just basically out of the range of the, uh, out of the scope of the array. So it, because it points to zero and there is no zero index in the array. And then let's go back to the, uh, to the, so here, uh, before we, before we go, go uh, before we, we, we move on the, uh, uh, we move on in the pseudocode here, you can build it as this way. So it's like we got a new card, which is two, and we store the new card value in the variable key. So basically key stores the new card, the new card value. So it's like we, 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 we copy and paste the new card to key. And then we, so for now, we just compare the new card with the, with the only card at hand, which is five. And we find that five is larger than two. So two, we should definitely insert two before five, right? Yes. So what do we do here? What with this statement or with this statement, what do we do is that we basically copy the value for copy. Originally, this is five. Originally, this is five. So what do we do is that we basically move the, the original card from uh, five at our hand, one position to the right to allocate space for the new card, right? So with this statement, it's pretty much like we, we move the, the, the card at, uh, in our hand to the right to allocate space for the new card, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, so we just yeah. finished, we just, with this statement, we just finished this step. And that, so, and then let's go back to the suit code. We, uh, so after we execute this line, where should we go next? The last line. Mm hmm Last line. Would we go back to the for loop? For go back to the this line? Yeah. Any other you suggestion? The, you go back to the while loop? Yeah. Go back to the while loop. Yes, yes, we should go back to the while loop because we just finished the uh, one iteration of the while loop. So we should go back to the while loop to check if the condition is satis is still satisfied or not, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Sure. And let's go back to the while loop to say if it is it is still satisfied. So here, uh, uh, we. We first check if i is larger than zero or not. So what is the value of i? Zero. Zero. Is zero larger than zero? No. 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 So this is basically false. Here we our condition is that. So if sorry, uh, our condition is is. Our. Oh, it's too big. So I'm going to use this one. Okay. So our condition is here. Um, I is larger than uh, so so something and for let me say false and something else must be false. False. So we don't even need to check. We don't even need to check this condition. We can totally forget about it, and and then we are pretty sure that this condition is going to fail, right? Yeah. And so, which means that we can, we need to terminate the while loop. So we, we cannot continue in the while loop anymore. And then where should we go next? To the last line? Yeah, to the yes, last we line. Yes, we go to the last line. AI plus one equal to key. We're going to assign key to AI plus one. So here, let's try, let's make this line a little bit easier for us to 
to, to understand. What is the value of key? Two. 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 Yeah, so you can find the value right over here. And then what is I? Zero. Zero. Okay, zero. And so it will be zero plus one and a zero plus one is a one. So this line would be like a, we assign two to a one, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, so what we, we are going, the change that we're going to make in the, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, array is right over here. We are going to give this cell a new value, which is two, right? Gotcha. Yes, is it something like we're going to insert the new card at this place? Yeah, okay. Right. right? We just, we're just going to insert the new card before five in our hand, which is the first place in our hand. Yep. Yep, okay. So yes, so uh, you can, as you can see that after this iteration, after this iteration, we got the first the two numbers sorted in the array, right? Is the first the two numbers in the array are sorted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, okay. So we just finished one iteration, and uh, so any question before I continue? With any question with this iteration of the for loop before I continue? All good for me so far. No questions. Okay, awesome. So then, uh, after we execute the last line, where should we go? Are we done? No. No. Now you have to go back to the for loop for the yes the next yes. card. Great, great. So because all of these things are are the part uh, are part of the for loop. So as we just finished one iteration of the for loop, we should go back to the for loop and check if the condition is sati is still satisfied, right? So then in the next in the next uh, so at the end of this for loop, even though this code does not, even though the pseudocode does not explicitly uh, indicated that we should increase the value of j by one because say by default we, we, we assume this okay we are going to increase the value of j by one so j become the new value of j becomes three okay so let's say we then we go back to the for loop we have four j so 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 is 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 the value of j less than or equal to six. Yes. Yes. So it means that the the condition of the for loop is still true. So we can uh, continue the for loop. Then we have key equal to a j. Okay, key equal to a j. So sorry, the, the new value of j should be changed. So so j is three. Since j is three, we're going to put j over here. And then uh, what is key? What is the value of key? What is key? It's gonna be so four. We, be four. Yeah. Yes, four. The new value of, of key is four because, because we can that just go over here in the array, go over here in the array to retrieve the value of a j. It is four. So then we assign four to key. And this is pretty much like this, okay? Uh, we got new card four, and in our hand we have two cards, two and five, and then we got a new card four from the table. Okay, so so if we just think think about playing poker cards, and after getting the new card four, what we do is that first we compare, first we are going to compare the new card with the last card with the last card in our hand. Which is five, and we find uh, four is la is less than five. Correct? Yeah. Yep. Yes. So we know that four should go before five, and to allocate a space before five, before five, we should move five one position to the right. Correct? Move it to the right, so that we got this space. So we, so we move five to the right one position to the right. And then next we compare, next we are going to compare four with the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the second last 
card in our hand, which is two. We find that four is larger than two. So which means that four should go after, go after two, right? Yep. Yes. And then we know that, okay, this is the space. In, this is the space for four. Then we, we finish the insertion, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is the, the, the large one we are, uh, say, when we are uh, really sorting the cards at hand, playing poker cards. And then let's go, go through the, uh, the pseudocode to say if it's the same thing. And then we say, okay, next we're going to execute this line to create a new variable i. What is the value of i? Two. Yes, because it is j minus one, j is three. So it's going to be three minus one equal two. So we have i equal to two. And again, we're going to, for every uh, index, we're going to put it in the corresponding place in the array. So i is right over here. And then uh, we have this, well, i is larger than zero. Is this true of us? True. True. True, yes, this is true. So what about the, Let's check the second condition, which is a little more tricky, okay? This is true. AI is larger than key. What is AI? Would it be two? No. Or five? Five. Five, yes. So to retrieve AI, you just need to go to the corresponding place of I and find the value inside the array, which is five. So we have AI as five. What is key? Four. 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 So is five larger than four? Yes. True. So this is yeah. true. True and true is true. So which means that the condition over here is satisfied and then we can uh, go to execute the next two lines. So with this line, with, the, with, the, with this line, we have AI plus one equal to AI. And what is the value of I? Five. No, I is two. Oh, right, right. Right, right over here, right? I is two. So, uh, so we can write, write this line as A3 equal to A2, right? Just by replacing, just by replacing I with its value two, we can write it as uh, A3 equal to A2, correct? Yes. And so what we do is basically we are going to copy the value from A2 to A3. So what is A2? Five. It two is is five right uh five right over here. So it two is five right over here. So we're going to assign five to to a three. So here it got uh, over here. We are going to have a new value five. Okay, and is is this step something like over here? We are we move five from the second place to the third place to 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 spare some. To, to, to spare some space for the new card four. Remember, we, we, we first, originally we have two cards, two and a five, and then we, we move five to the right. Right? Yep. Okay, so yes, this is like that step. And then we next, we're going to do I minus minus. So what is the current value of I? Two. And then we're going to decrease it by one. So the new value of i is going to be one, right? So then we are going to update the corresponding space, uh, place of i in the, uh, in the uh, array a. So we have i as one over here. And then, so here we just finished this line, i minus minus. Where should we go next? Back up to the while. Yes, we should go back to the while loop. And let's check if the, uh, the condition is satisfied or not. Let's say first we are comparing i with, with uh, zero. What is the value of i? One. One, one. It's, it's over here. So we have one larger than zero. This is true. And what about the second condition? <clears throat> For the second condition, we have ai. We we're going to compare ai with key. What is ai? Uh, two. Two. Yes, I is, I is one, so AI is here, two. So this is two, what about a key? Four. four. Four, yes, we can retrieve the value from here. So key is four, and is two larger than four? Yes. 
Oh no. No, no so it's false. false. So true and false is going to be false. False, right? So which means that the, this condition fail, fails and then we cannot continue the while loop. So then we're going to go to the last line. Right? Yep. Yep. Yep, correct. Okay. Next, we are going to say we are going to execute AI plus one equal, equal key. So let's say, what is key? Four. Four. Key is four. And what is I? One. 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 So this will be A2 equal to four, right? Right? Yeah. So it's like we're going to uh, assign four to A2. So the change that we're going to make in the array is over here. It's over here. So we're going to assign the sec four to the second place of the array. And so two, four, five. So, and this step, this step, we assign four to A2 is pretty much like we insert the new card to the second place in our hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, so and then after this iteration, after this iteration, you can say that we got the first three cards or the first three numbers in the array sorted, right? Yes. 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 Okay. So, so, uh, and I'm going, I'm going to go, go over one, one more iteration. So, uh, so then we should go back to the for loop. Before we check the condition, we should increase the value of j by one, right? Yep. Okay, so we are going to give it a new value. In increase uh, its value from um, from uh, three to, to four. So j is going to have a new value four. So we're going to mark j over here and then um, so so we're going to so is is four so four is less than six okay so which means that we uh, we can continue the condition and then um so we we, we next we have key equal to a j what is what is key uh, six six yes six we have key equal to six and then we have j as we have j as uh, uh, sorry, we have i as j minus one. What is what is the value of i? Three. Three. Yes. So we have we have a new variable i whose value is three, and then we can mark i at here. So let's say uh, well, i is larger than zero, and this is definitely true because i is, i is three, and then we're going to check the second condition. A i is larger than key. Okay. So what is a i? Uh, would it be five? Yes, over here, AI is five. And what about key? That's four, so five is greater than four. No, key is six. Oh, six, six. Yes. So key is six, and this is going to be false, right? So true and false is false. So which means that the, the, the while loop fails in the first iteration. And uh, bef even before the start of the of the first iteration, so uh, we can skip the, we can totally skip the uh, the uh, uh, the while loop, and then just go to the last line. We have AI plus one equal to key. So what is key? Six. Six. And what is AI plus one? Four. Yes, I is three. So three plus one is four. So it's like we assign six to a four. And then we're going to make the corresponding change in the array. Originally it is six, now it is still six. So this is pretty much in, in one round. In one round when we are playing poker cards, we got three cards at a hand that have re already been sorted, which are two, four, five. And then we got new card six, which is larger than all of them. So we just, it's pretty easy. We just grab new, the new card six, append the new card six at the end of, of our hand, right? So here you can see that after this iteration, we got the first four numbers sorted, 
right? So basically, at the at each end, so so at each end, uh, with each iteration, we, we 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 try to get the first j numbers sorted. We want to get the first j numbers sorted, and that's why here we're going to continue j. We're going to keep increasing j until the length of the array until it reaches the here until it reaches six, and then. We're going to get the first six numbers sorted, meaning that all the all the numbers in the array are sorted, and then we finish the whole code. Make sense? Yep. All okay. good. Okay. Yeah. So, any questions so far? No questions. Okay. So this is the homework, right? That we we had. To yes. Submit. This is. I'm going to talk about the homework later. Oh, okay. Um, so for now, I just finish explaining the, the why does this pseudocode work step okay. by step. Right. So I'm not I'm I'm not going to cover the last two iterations because it's going to be very time consuming, and uh, uh, so some of you may be bored with that. So if you are interested, you can explore it by yourself, just following my procedure, and uh, it's 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 pretty it's pretty easy, like what what we did before, and. Uh, so uh, this is the, the, the third code. And so for now, you can understand that as, after we finish the code, uh, when j reaches the length of the array, uh, we are going to be able to get all the numbers in the array sorted. So that, is, uh, that, that means that insertion sort actually can help us to sort an array. So, so here, now we know that the, the, this third code or this function or this algorithm is correct, meaning that giving some input, it gives you the correct output, the expected output. So next, my question is that, okay, in your job, okay, if your, if your boss assigned you a job, say, okay, I, I want you to implement a sorting algorithm and you, you use insertion sort to, to, finish, to finish the, uh, the job, and you present it to your, to, your, to your boss, and your boss, after checking your code, okay, yes, it, it works, it, it is correct, it, it is correct. But your boss may ask you, how long do you expect your code to run? How fast is your code? Would the compiler tell us? No, the compiler will not tell you. Literally, without, without executing your code, you don't know how long it is because uh, it, it is too complicated. First, it, it it depends on the implementation you have, and also it depends on the the, the input instance. If you got a very long array, it's just, it may take a a couple of minutes. Whereas if you just want your algorithm to sort a single number, it's it's pretty fast, all right? So and also it depends on the uh, the, the the hardware. Um, so if you want on a GPU, it's going to be much faster. There are a lot of factors. So you have to run your code before answering that question, mostly likely, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but yeah, 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 that's, that's the truth. And so, so, um, you may ask, you, you may, your answer to your boss, maybe it depends. It's, it depends some factors. Uh, so, so here, um, what I want to say is that, uh, so, I'm not sure if you see such a graph before, uh, so, uh, do, do you know something about stocks? Hey Jimmy, like as as M as MP five hundred. Let me just uh, retrieve one figure for you. I think I have it. Say, uh, just give your stock as an example. Let's say if we look at here the Nasdaq, which is the uh, the index, which is a a a, a uh, the the Nasdaq index. You can see that the performance of this stock, right, with regard to year. So, and uh, similarly, uh, let's say, okay, for now, if you have, 
if you just receive $1,000 and you want to invest it in the, in the stock market. And so, so we, we basically want to uh, measure uh, how much money are this 1,000 going to be in a couple of years. Let's say in one year, in two years, three years, until 10 years, right? So say you, you, you just, now you find a financial advisor saying that help me to do the investment. Your financial investor may give you such a graph, okay? May give you such a figure, okay? And it will tell you, okay, this is the worst case. In the worst case, your $1,000 is going to be, let's say, $1,200 in 10 years. And in the, in the best case, if the stock market is really, it keeps, keeps the rally, it's going to be, let's say, $5,000. This is the best case. And then your, uh, so your, uh, say, uh, the, the, and then this is the average, the average expectation. So, so like, if we do the average, that, that would be your expected return. This line would be your expected return with, uh, with regard to time. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. So here we can say that your return or the market of, uh, sorry, the, the value of your $1,000 is going to, to depend, on some, depend on some factors, like how many years are you going to, to invest? And then that, that's where we got the X axis, meaning the years. And then also it depends on, okay, so, so your luck, if you are pretty lucky, and then you can go for this much. But if you are unlucky, you may even lose money. So, um, so this is, and actually, if we talk about the execution, the execution uh, time of your code, it is similar. So here I'm writing N, N as the length of the array, length of the array. So the execution time of your, of your uh, code depends on some factors. The, the first factor is that the length of the array, we definitely expect longer arrays would take longer time. Let's say for example, for an array whose length is 1000, in the best case, it only takes, let's say for example, one second. But in the worst case, in the worst case, if you have an array that is, that is, totally wrongly sorted. So, so you can basically get the best case if, you, if your input arrays has already been sorted. So there is not much work for you to do. Whereas if you have an uh, input array that is reversely sorted in, in, in descending order, it, you may it may take you a, a long time, let's say two minutes to get it sorted, for your algorithm to run and get it sorted, right? This is the worst case. And this is the best case. And then in average, on average, this is the, the time. If we, if we run your, your algorithm over a lot of arrays, random arrays, and this is the average time that we can get. Okay? And in computer science, in computer science, we do not care about the best case at all. Because the, usually there is a very very large limitation, a very huge limitation on the best case, saying that your input, you, you have to be very, very lucky in order to hit the best case. So we don't, uh, we don't care about that. We mostly care about this one, the worst case. This is like, how much time do you expect your, your algorithm to, to run in the worst case, the upper bound of the execution time. And then we usually ex ex uh, ex express the worst case time complexity uh, what, what was the case time performance in terms of complexity? Complexity means that how how fast does your does the execution time grow with regard to the input size? So uh, usually it is a mathematical formula, and in, so so in our case it is n square, meaning that the execution time of the insertion sort in the worst case it grows quadratically with the input size. And to denote the, and we usually use the uh, capital O, the capital O to denote the worst case complexity. 
So here for our insertion source, the worst the worst case temp, uh, temp complexity is O n square. So complexity means like a, a, a mathematical the complexity means a, a mathematical formula to, to, to describe how fast does the execution time grow uh, with regard to the uh, with regard to the the, uh, the input size. Is it too mathematical? No. No. Okay. So so this is the the term. I mean, this you you should be. In the future, we're going to, for every algorithm, we're going to talk about the time complexity. So for cars, say, if we got a, a car, if people design a car, let's say Honda just, for example, Honda just released a new generation of Accord or Civic, then what we care most about is like, how, how many horsepowers does it have, right? So, so, so for every car, we talk about the horsepowers. Similarly, for every algorithm we talk about the complexity the big o and square or something for horsepower so we talk about let's say 180 or 300 or something but for complexity we talk about the big o notation meaning that in the worst case uh how how long do you uh so so how how uh how fast does the execution time grow with regard to the input size Okay, so if you are interested in, so for, for insertion sort, it's, it's time complexity is this, O n square. And if you want to know why it is O n square, uh, I have a couple of ded dedicated pages in my, in my uh, say, say uh, slides to explain why, but it's too mathematical. Uh, I don't want to go too much details into that. Uh, uh, so as an undergraduate student, what you only need to know is the conclusion, is this formula. You don't need to um, understand the uh, the inference steps. It's purely mathematical. So um, I'm going to skip that. And uh, so the, the the detailed analysis is is basically here, and it will tell you why it is. Uh, so there are a lot. Uh, there are like why it is the, uh, the the worst case complexity is O n square. So okay. And um, this is our lecture. And so let's say, do you have any question regarding time complexity? No question. Say it. I have no questions. Okay. So for now, the time complexity thing may, be, may seem very uh, abstract for you, but you will be familiar with it uh, uh, when we go deeper in our in our course and so if no question then i'm going to go over uh, your homework so this is your first homework and it's going to be re released today and due next friday so you have like seven or eight days to work on it uh, you have two tasks the first task is to implement is to implement the insertion sort algorithm as we discussed in the lecture and the second task is that after you you finish your insertion sort I want you to draw a plot like this, where the x axis is the length of the array, and the y axis is the time that it takes your algorithm to sort the array. And uh, so you can just draw a plot. And here, instead of having three lines, you, you will only need to draw one line because we just, so far we just learned insertion sort. After drawing the, the figure, you will be able to get a sense of what is time convexity. Uh, and to make your life easier, so uh, I give I provide you skeleton code. So for now, I'm going to stop presenting from my from my uh, my iPad Pro, and instead I'm going to uh, start presenting from my laptop to show you the uh, uh, my, uh, the suit code that I provide to you. Can I say it? Uh, let me see. Can you see my screen? Yeah. 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 We, 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 okay. Yeah. So far, it is, it is a Spotify. <laughs> uh, but I'm opening my Eclipse to show the uh, the code.
Hey, Professor, quick question. Mm -hmm. um, do you care what IDE we use or should we use I it? I don't care. No? Okay. Yeah, as long as uh, you got your code work, okay. it's absolutely fine. But I personally, I encourage you to use uh, Eclipse. So yeah. Next week, I'm going to teach something about debugging in Eclipse. Okay. So this is the skeleton code that I provide to you. So I, I define a lot of auxiliary functions to you, for you. For example, this is a function that can help you to generate a, a random array of size n. n is the length of the array. And this is the function for you to check if the array is sorted, if I, the input array is sorted or not. So, uh, 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 and, uh, And then um, uh, this is the main, so if, if it's a sorted, if they are already sorted, it's going to return true. Otherwise it's going to return false. And then, um, so, so in the last, it is the main function. You can say that in the, in the main function, what we do is that first we print out the lines in that the insertion source starts. And then for, we have a for loop. Uh, so in the for loop, the n starts from 100,000, meaning that the, the length of the array starts from 100,000. And it can be as large as 1 million. And in every iteration, we're going to increase n by 100,000. So, and then in each, in each iteration, first we're going to generate a, a random array of size, of size n. And then uh, we're going to execute the insertion, the insertion sort algorithm. So um, uh, this is the, uh, the insertion sort algorithm. Uh, so this is the part that you need to provide your, your work. You need to fill in your code over here by translating the pseudocode uh, to Java. Uh, this is your, your job over here. And act, so it will, it will execute the insertion sort. And then it will measure the time that your insertion sort, your insertion sort takes in order to get the resorted. So, and then uh, also it will, it will check if the, uh, if the array is sorted or not. And finally, it will print, print out a line where the, the, the format of the line is that first it is the n, meaning the size of the array, followed by a, a comma, and then it is the uh, t, t means time, time in milliseconds. How, how long does your, your, how many milliseconds does your, does your insertion sort take in order to sort an array of size n? And then the, 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 last, the last one is, is flag, it's, it should be either true or false. True means that your uh, the, the the return array is fully sorted, meaning that your insertion sort is correct. If it's false, it means that your insertion sort is 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 wrong. The implementation your implementation of insertion sort is wrong. The array the return array is not fully sorted. So here we can execute it. Uh, the the code over here and let's proceed. And. Uh, over here, you can, can you see the output over here, the, the, the displays? Yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, for each line, we, we got the format with n, first with n. For example, the first line starts with n as 100,000. Zero, the second number is zero, meaning that your, so far the insertion sort takes zero milliseconds. This is because our insertion sort does, so far the insertion sort does nothing but just return the input array. And, and then the, the, last, the last column is false. Uh, the, the last value is false. This is because we have not implemented, implemented the insertion sort yet. It's just a return a ra the, the, the random input array. And so it, is, so it is not fully sorted, it is false. So when you finish your code, you, expect the la you will expect the last column to be all true. And then the, the second column will not be zero at all. It will be some value. So after retrieving that, those values, after retrieving those values, you can just copy and paste those values to something like Excel and draw a plot, draw a, a, a plot uh, like what I showed you before. Uh, I'm going to open it. Draw a plot like this. You can just copy and paste those numbers to Excel or go to Python and you'll be able to, to uh, say, say, uh, uh, say some bad, say, say a figure like this. Okay.
Any question regarding your homework? No. Yeah. So, like, so the only thing we have to modify is uh, insertion sort. Like Sorry? The, the function that. The only thing we have to modify is the function yes. named insertion only sort. Yes. To, to do something over here with the comment fill in your program. Uh, professor, when we run, when we put in like the the program and we run like the the whole thing, it'll give us the amount of time it took to run the program. Yes. But we should try like different amounts for the the array. No, you don't need to try a certain amount. You just try it once and uh, use use the use the the output from one time execution to draw the plot. Oh, okay. Thank you. Any other question? Yeah, one more question. Um, sure. So, do we have to graph with only one line for now? Yes, only one line for insertion right. sort. So, the, so the time for the for the sorting algorithm will may, may be different for the other students, like yes, depending on their hardware. It depends on a lot of th a lot of things. Whether you got the lock, so how how random is the array that you get, and uh, what is your your laptop? What is your computing resource? But generally, the the the, the shape of the of the plot should be similar. All right. Okay. Okay. Any other question? I'm just saying. It seems that some people PDF. Uh, we, how do we send you the graph? You just upload them on, on Canvas. So I'm going to uh, publish the, the assignments today. Uh, so do you think that the homework is very difficult? No. Uh, I'm sure that some mm -hmm. of you will, will feel it difficult, experience the difficulty. Um, so I, I, I suggest you to start the homework over the weekend or at least by next class, by our next class, so that we can have some discussion. We don't want to delay the homework until next Friday. And I'm sure that if you start the homework next Friday afternoon, you will just give it up. Okay, so uh, not really confusing how we'll do the graph. Or you can just go to uh, YouTube to uh, go for, say, say uh, search for something like Excel plot. It is, it, yes, it's, it's due next Friday. Excel plot. You can just go to YouTube to search for Excel plot, and you'll be able to say how to draw it. OK. So uh, if no question, then that's it. Yeah, enjoy your weekend. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thanks, Professor.